everyone, and welcome to the Ones You Lost podcast, where once again we are talking about everything art, art related, and just our stupid opinions. I'm here once again with Alyssa. Hello. And Kat. Hello. All right, so in today's uh, episode, our starting topic is going to be commissions, both the good and the bad. So I want to start this one off by starting with Kat because she has a story. Okay. Cool. I've, like, I, I've, I've, like, so I've gotten commissions from quite a few places. Uh, like, obviously, like, Twitter, uh, like, through Discord, and, like, through Facebook. And I, like, I, I do have to say some of the worst ones have come from Facebook. I've only had, like few good ones come out of them like i've, I've had like i've had right. like the whole thing like where uh some like some people like will uh try to like get free art out of you will try to scam you it's not fun and yeah scams are the worst i feel like one of the i worst... somehow feel like that oh sorry go <laughs> sorry. on yeah um i feel i no, feel no, like one of the like worst uh things i've had happened with me on Facebook uh, is I had one commissioner approach me and like it get very creepy very fast and it apparently seems oh, like goodness. this uh, mm, it apparently yeah. seems like this guy uh, would go around and commission female artists and he would like specifically ask for like he'd be like oh like he would ask them do you have an OC and whenever you were like uh, yeah I mean obviously I'm an artist we all have OCs the, like most part, right? Yeah, and yeah. He, most he, creatives he, come up with characters. Yeah, yeah, he would be like, "Cool, cool." And I think I can see where this that, is going. Yeah, and I don't like it. That like, <laughs> same. Like, because uh, this dude was looking for an NSFW commission. Uh, I do NSFW art, so he was like, "Hey, just reach out, like NSFW artist, like you know, message me." And I was like, "All right, cool." So I messaged him to be like, "Hey, you know, my my commissions are open if you want to." And he asked me that question. And I was like, "Oh yeah, of course I've got like female characters," and. Apparently, and he told me he had this yeah. thing where he would go around to commission uh, artists, and, like, if they had, like, a female OC that he wanted to, like, have his, like, little persona character, like, screwing them in some sort of way. And I tried to, like, and I immediately <laughs> shut it down. I was like, oh, wow, I'm oh. not comfortable with that. I was like, however, like, you know, if you want... I was like, if you want, uh, like, you have a friend that has an OC, and they're, like, you know, they're consenting to it, or, like, I'm like... Quite frankly, if you want your character, like, just, mm-hmm. like, you know, screw in some random anime girl, I can also do that. But I, like, I would have... but not my OCs. Yeah, I was, like, I was like, I'm not comfortable with my OCs. And mm-hmm. afterward, like, the dude, like, the dude, like, the dude, the dude was like, oh, okay, and then he blocked me. What do you mean block? Why would he block you? Yeah, I think, like... Like, yeah, because like, he was just coming in like, ooh, I hope she lets me screw OC. Yeah. It's like me doing it with her. Right, yeah. right. It, that's like what I imagined. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was not. It was not cool, and it, like it was uh. very creepy. And I did not really know how to go about this. Like, I like. Right. It, like, I, I find it bewildering. That, like, yeah. like I was the one who got blocked, but well, he was the creepy one. Right. He's like, he's I, like, should he's I? Like, he's myself? like, he's like, this person like, knows too much. He's like, ah, uh, he's like, he's like, fuck <laughs> this artist in particular. She won't conform to my fetish. Right, yeah. right, and <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like I, I have told you guys, I think before that, like a lot of people, without knowing me or seeing my selfies online, think I'm a girl online. I don't know if it's the way I type or how I conduct myself, but people automatically assume, I guess, because I don't draw a lot of NSFW, that they're like, "Oh, this this is a wholesome girl, <laughs> and I'm going to send her a DM." Oh, no. mm-hmm. So when I first opened up my NSFW account, that was like the green light for creepy oh, people. No. Right. Because right. they still assumed I was a girl. No matter how many selfies I posted myself, they still They're assumed like, oh, I was a girl. Oh, that must be her. That must be her, must really be her boyfriend brother. or big brother. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. It's so funny because it's like when I started so posting like, on YouTube, it was the opposite. What ends up happening, right? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. So what ends up happening, right, is I had... um. I had a bunch of people messaging me in DMs on my NSFW account who were like, 
hey, do you want to see some stuff I found? And I thought, oh, okay, if they just found it, sure. Like, I'm willing to, like, hear them out, you know? Then they'd be like, send it. And then it's like, are you excited? What? I'm like, what? It's, it's what? good art. I like it. <laughs> um, they're like, are you into it? I'm like, I mean, I guess. Like, I, you're like, you, I, I, I want to clarify. Like, I want to clarify look at, that, like, like as a like, as a type of artist, if someone comes to me and they're like, "Hey, I have like a like an odd fetish and like I want to get art for it," if like as long as they're paying, you know, and they're not creepy towards me, like you know, they're not like right, they're not making trying to they're not trying to make advances at me. Yeah. I'm like, sure, yeah, I'll I'll draw your like I got like I'll draw your kink. I don't care. You know, I can remain professional. Right, yeah, I right. remain professional in that I've, matter. I've got no problem. But like, yeah, it no, was just it, like, fair, but like that dude. That I've dude got no problem with people sharing their NSOW with whatever me. he did that. So. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Then, like, so. Well, it's like, <laughs> when people send me NSOW, I'm not upset, because I'm very, um, I'm very open, but I don't think people realize that I have to be, like, in a certain mood to, like, think about artwork in anything other than an analytical way. Oh, okay, yeah, I, okay, yeah, I get that, it. That's so real. That's real. Because they'll, they'll, like, share with me NSOW, and I'll be like, Whoa! They drew that labia really well. Yeah, like, <laughs> call back the cat. Like, like, as an NSFW artist, I see so much <laughs> porn. Like every time I open up Twitter, that I'm desensitized at this point. Yeah, you you just look and I'm at like, it as so. At this point, like it, like I don't even get like excited anymore. I'm not like woo hoo hoo titties. I'm just like whoa wow. Look at the way they did those nipples. Right. Oh god. Yeah. Anatomy. Oh yes. <laughs> right, right. You appreciate the anatomy Ooh, and the, like the That's artistic and, 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 like, uh, expression like, of it. Yeah. I can't count exactly. how many times that like my partner has like they're like, well, why are you zooming in like on the nipple of that titty? I'm like, because it's really interesting shading, and I, I'm gonna try it. <laughs> <laughs> right, I yeah. mean, that makes sense. Actually, I had a friend of mine who's like, I had a friend of mine who's really good at NSFW, right? And I, I had posted that one uh, a while back, which was like the, the Callie and Kiara artwork that was way spicier than anything yeah, I've ever Yeah, you know, the, like the one I said, girl, and, girl uh, with the soul. He goes, hey, good job on the anatomy, but I do want to let you know that like the, the, sh the color of the nipple like gradually like recedes as it goes away from the center. And I'm like, Shit, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. <laughs> You're like, fuck. And I was like, I clearly fuck. lost would not know. He does not have uh, nipples. He is a nipple. I tried to man. draw the sexy, but instead I drew the anatomically incorrect. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. But uh, let, let's go back to the topic of commissions yeah. for a bit. So <laughs> I, um, I usually get like. Like, I get a lot of commissions, but I, I like stated in the last um, podcast we did, I take a really long time to finish them. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to, but I have a problem where if I'm not feeling the artwork, I start over. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that gets uh, commissioners not very happy. They're like, hey, but I really like that other one. And I try to explain, yeah, but if I push forward on that, you're going to get a worse Yeah, problem. I can do something like that one. But not it. Yeah, and, like, I, I, I completely and am. I understand the frustration because I keep having to redo it. I completely it. understand. But I want to make sure they get something good and that I put something out that I'm proud of because I've pushed out commissions I'm not proud of in the past, and I won't even post them because I'm so ashamed. Commissions take them. me so much longer than normal pieces, and it's because if somebody like because if I'm doing a normal piece for me, you know, like I'm not over here like. Like very hardcore like analyzing everything I do like especially if it's just something mm -hmm. for fun but whenever somebody pays right. me I'm like I'm like they deserve a certain they deserve yeah. a su certain amount of quality that I know I can achieve and so it takes me much longer but it's because I'm pulling out all the stops like things are get like I'm actually adding mm -hmm. texture like I, I I'm like I'm actually going through and like studying anatomy like as I like go through and uh, make the poses and stuff. Right. Like, I make... You, like, cross-check. Yeah, I, I, I make, like, yeah, I... Yeah. Hard I try to make sure everything is perfect in a commission. Because, you know, if somebody... Like, if somebody's, like, mm -hmm. you know, handing you their money and they're, like, trusting you, like, uh, to bring justice to, like, their characters or, you know, like, their favorite character or something like that, I feel like I have to achieve that goal. Right, and, like, that pressure is super real. Right. Super, super real. I mean, um, in my younger years, yeah. I've definitely also 
given some commissions that I'm not proud of either. And I, it feels mm-hmm. shitty. Like it, it feels like I'm doing a disservice. And it like, does. usually the client will be like, oh, it's so great. I love it. I'm like, really though? Do you really think that? Cause I, I yeah. don't feel, oh, the, I same, feel the same, way. you know? And it's so like, I'm, look, I'm glad you're happy. I wish I was more happy with it. And like, sometimes it sucks. Cause it's like, Mm-hmm. Um, uh, especially like starting out, it's so rare and far and few when you start like getting commissions. So like when you get a commission, um, like once, cause like when I first started out, it was like 2013, it was 10 years ago on DeviantArt when I was like, I want to say like 18 or 17 or something. And it was like, I, um, when you got a commission, you took the commission because it was so rare to get a commission. And sometimes the like prompt was just not something my imagination would vibe with. And I just like, couldn't come up with anything good. Or sometimes you would get Mm -hmm. a client that was like so strict that I had no artistic freedom. And those suck because like, you know, a lot of the times like a client is not an artist and they don't know what makes right. art good slash bad. And so sometimes they're like, I want it in this way with this pose, with this angle, holding this item, with this expression and blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Very, very, very specific. I don't know if you guys have had those. I've definitely had those. And it's like what they come up yeah. with in their head that they think is good is not as good as me, an artist that, you know, studies this stuff and actually experiments Knows. and has practice. Yeah. Right. And I'm just like... Usually man. it's like it's full of impractical <laughs> accessories too. Right, right. And it's like, man, I wish I wish you would just like let me have a little bit of flexibility because I can make this so much better. But you won't be happy yeah. with that. And that defeats the point of, you know, me giving a service to you. So like so you know, those that, those are the worst commissions. <laughs> yeah, that that makes me want to go on a small tangent. Um, this tangent is one that particularly drives me insane with commissions. And I've worked with some wonderful people who have had me do this. But it is, regardless of how well and how much I like the person, the experience is always somewhat tainted because they'll commission me. They'll be like, hey, I really like your artwork. I really like your style. Now that I've got you, let's do a completely different style. Oh, God. <sighs> it's not yours. <laughs> Got a lot. I, I hate like, that. So I have. It's like, why did you come to me if you don't want my style? Like, like thing, I could I, replicate another style, but well, like, why not go to someone? Here's else? the thing, like, I like because like the, the thing that people, the thing that happened with me. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. It, it's it's an issue of um, whenever people like come to me with a style that's not mine, it's like it's usually they have me come onto a project that they've already started that they lost their previous artist. And that's already a red flag, right? Yeah. yeah. Usually I ask, I ask a series of questions before I take on that commission whenever I find out that this is a project that's being picked up after the fact. I'm like, was the previous artist not delivering on time? And if they reply with anything but yes, um, I know that it's probably their fault that the artist left. Mm-hmm. The only acceptable reason to drop an artist who's working on a long-term project is if the artist has failed. Yeah. Right. Which so, sometimes artists do bail. So whenever yeah, they happens. say... There's definitely unprofessionals out there. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Like, mm-hmm. like, another issue I ran into, like, with commissions is... I think, like, because I, like, I, like, I ended up having, like... I re-edited my commission sheet to clarify. And, again, I still get people who just don't read my commission sheet. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I clarify mm-hmm. that, yes, I can mimic other styles. Styles that I'm willing to mimic are, like, you know, if you want your character done in the My Hero style or the Demon Slayer style, absolutely, I can do that. Mm-hmm. But if you come to me with another artist's style and ask me to mimic it, I will look at you and be like, go, to, go ask that artist for a commission. Right. I'm not that artist, and yeah. I'm not going to take, take away, the, like, you know... I'm not going to do it for you cheaper. Their work. Yeah. Right. You, you're not going to be like a right. knockoff third party brand version of that yeah, artist. Yeah, like, it's also, like, I feel like it's also just disrespectful yeah. to the person. Right, right. I could totally see that. Especially I wouldn't if they're want like, somebody to do that to me. An independent. Right, right. I am. Um, mm. 
Yeah, mim- mimicking styles, especially when it's like not like a franchise like um, yeah. Demon Slayer or or like you know, mm-hmm. it's like it's when they're like another internet personality like Sam draws art for example. Mm-hmm. It's like I could, but like I don't. I feel like it, it feels a little dirty. I feel like. Th- Right. It does feel dirty. Like, I don't, you know, or it's yeah. like if somebody came to me and it was just like, I want it in Loish's style, well, it, but it I can't kind hire Loish. It kind like, of reminds me of those Fiverr <laughs> artists, right? The ones who are like constantly DMing people for a commission. <laughs> yeah. And whenever you, and you want to take those people and be like, look, I know that you want a job in what you love. That's acceptable. What's not acceptable is going out and com- messaging every person you know Starting a freaking bot on Twitter to see anytime someone mentions commissions and be like, oh, me, I yeah, can I do that. And then it's like, that. your style's not what I'm looking for. And they're like, I can be any style that you're looking for. And you look at their art. And I'm like, I don't think you can be any other style other than not good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can. Is it not uh. good? <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't want to be mean, <laughs> but like, usually these people are not ready for commissions. Um, you know what I mean? Okay, so like, they haven't back, become oh, yeah. themselves I, yet. Back when, uh, mm-hmm. like Animal Crossing was like such a like a big big thing. Like I understand it's still a big thing, but like when it first just came out, mm-hmm. um, I got broke from uh, doing sketches before money was handed. Yeah, because mm-hmm. like and it, th- that was something that really sucked for me because I like because I liked being able to like you know communicate with a person and be like oh well this is what I was thinking you know and mm-hmm. if they like it they pay me I got broke from that unfortunately um, yeah. because I had mm-hmm. multiple people come to me over like says I was doing a special type of commission at that time where uh, I'm like if you took a picture in game of like your Animal Crossing character or surrounded by scenery mm-hmm. that I was going to draw it. You know, in like a mm-hmm. like a mix of like the Animal Crossing style, like mixed with anime. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah, like because I found it very fun to do, and I had so many people that would like act like they were wanting to commission me, and then they would just run away with a sketch, free sketch. Yeah, that's um I I've heard so many horror stories of, you know, artists being scammed. So uh, now that I ask when I first started front. doing it. <laughs> right, and that's I have never been scammed because I have never uh done a commission without being paid first. Yep. Like I I always like I'm like, no, you pay me first or I'm not starting. Right. Kind of thing. Um, and I've had some people be like, well, how do I know that you're going to commit? And I'm like, because I'm an independent professional. Yeah. And I have a track record that shows that I can and will and never and have so dropped out. like mm-hmm. now, like the only time I'll ever do that is if it's a close friend. Like, you know, somebody I know yeah. will absolutely like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting paid on this right. day. And I, like, mm-hmm. I will, like, I will go right. ahead and start for them because like, I know they're going to come. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that totally makes sense because they're a friend. But it's like with strangers online, it's like, I don't know this person. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I, I have proof that I have committed to an onslaught of commissions at this point. But you have no proof that you might, you know, will commit or not commit. Mm. So, no. Not to if mention, you're so coming easy to, me, to fake proof because um, they can be like. Yes, I understand. Because they can just like make a brand right. new account and be like, I, I commissioned this artist to make this. And it's like they just stole a photo of some, somewhere. Right. Well, now with like, AI, that can get even like, worse, too. So, like, mm-hmm. so something I love, though, about, like, friends commissioning me is, like, oftentimes I will, like, I will give them, like, a discounted price, you know? It's like, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, this is my homie. You get the homie discount. And they'll, yeah. they, they tend right. to look at me and be like, no, I refuse to take that discount. Oh, see, that's <laughs> that's how you know they're real friends. Exactly. Real friends pay and support <laughs> their friends. Yeah, yeah that's it's great. Like, like having other artists commission you is awesome because they they almost every time another artist will like get it. tip you because they understand yeah. and like that, right, that's how I it, am yeah. because uh, when I I, commissioned my I friend, never realized like, what that a true piece was about one eighty and I sent like two fifteen or something over. I was like, I was like big tip mm-hmm. for the babe. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's like right, one yeah. thing that I found was. What were you going to say, Lost? I didn't realize that like true friends would still pay the full price anyway, and I did have a friend that took advantage of um of the discounts oh, no. constantly. Uh, we all know who that friend is. Um, oh no! But I'm not. 
I'm I don't talk about him anymore. Right? But, um, yeah. Don't name essentially, him. um, I the only thing I would ask is like if if I ever needed like work done from him that he would be willing to do it, and then he, one day he just like cut ties completely and I'm like well I guess nope. I'm never getting that favor am I you know uh, right. so I was like I learned well, that like, like some like, people yes. some people you can't hold them to their favors so it's like but at the same time I'm not willing to um, I'm not willing to like be petty about it that's why I'm not naming that's why I'm not doing anything and that's why I'm not even saying what he does Which I, like, that I, way like, I want to I wanna clarify yeah like go ahead sorry Sorry. No, it's it's okay. Sorry. It's um it, it's one of those things <laughs> that um that I real I didn't realize till I started making friends with uh with a few other people, one of them being Jacob Wilson and uh Patrick um and they're they're um they're voice actors. But I remember the way I got in contact with them was they were clients first and then I just started talking with them and I was like Oh, they're pretty cool people. And then once I offered them the homie discount, they were like, "No, I'm paying full price." And I was like, "Oh shit, you can do yeah, that? Good, people. <laughs> good friends." Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> oh man, you actually want to support your friends? Yeah, like, here's the thing. I, want, like, I do want to clarify because, like, like, because you know, some of my friends are on the broke train along with me. Like, it, like I'm not over here like being like, "Oh yeah, you take the discount. Oh, you're a bad friend." I give you the discount no. for a reason. Right. I right. want you to be able to have my artwork. Like, you know, like, I want to be exactly. able to do this right. for you, so I'm working with you. So, like, them taking the discount, you know, is not, like... No, it's not no, a bad that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Because, like, that, that, typically that those people, the people of my friends who do take the discount, like, my friends who do take the discount and stuff, uh, like, they're they're super awesome, like, like when it comes to, like, commissioning. Um, because, mm. like, one like one friend in particular, my friend Killer, uh, absolute, like, star commissioner, like... Because, like, I've ran into a lot of issues with past commissioners. Like, I, I always, I, cause I always clarify in the sketch, like, whenever I have the sketch, I'm like, if you want to make changes, now would be the time to do it. And I've had quite a mm-hmm. few people wait till the very last second. Yeah. Right. And be like, oh, I love it, but can you change the pose entirely? And I'm like, Oh, what? yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, I hate that. It's like, it's like... <laughs> It's like I don't oh, give it's redos. Just the pose. I'm like the just face. the pose. <laughs> yeah. The, the pose. It's yeah. The essence it's of like the, drawing. the pose is me drawing it's the a- entire commission. Like, what do you mean? It's just the pose. Yeah. I've gone that before. It, but like, that before. My, like my friend Killer, like, because like, like, like he understands. Because like I, because like I, I've vented quite a bit about like you know having commissioners do that to me. And so yeah. like if I'm in the sketch process, like working on something for him. He's, he's like, all right, I'm going to tell you everything I want very specific during the sketch process. And, yeah. like, another thing about, like, you know, commissioning a friend is, like, like, or like a friend commissioning you, is you can just drag their ass into a call and be like, all right, I'm working on it in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I usually, time, I usually do that. But I also, like, I'll have people be like, if you're comfortable with taking pictures, take a picture of the pose you want, or I send them, like, a 3D modeler so they can, like, kind of pose something even if the pose isn't perfect i have a more of an idea of what they want right because they're able to position the camera right able to yeah you can just things. use it as a reference yeah. you don't have to copy and uh one thing i was saying um I, i'm gonna change gears real quick um and talk about i don't i know okay. uh Alyssa, you've done some studio work before and not like major stu- like big big studios but like studio projects where yeah. they're trying to do stuff it's just like because I've done it, right. too. and It's independent contract work that, like, tapped on the industry, but it didn't, like, go into it because I didn't want to go into the industry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If that makes well, sense. Well, the best way I can put it was um, I actually yeah. got offered a really big job and position one time. Uh, there was a, an indie company mm-hmm. that was building traction on, like, a gotcha type game. And they wanted a lead artist and, like, director for it. And for some reason, they came to me. This is when I had, like, 15,000 followers. I'm I'm only at, like, 16.4. Like, I've only gained 1,000 since then. It's a fairly recent thing. But they were like, uh, you okay. are the closest we can hire in terms of availability while at the same time having the skills we need for it. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, would you be willing to direct this group of artists to, like, 
coordinate a style for this project and then um, like help direct everything and get uh, the first few batch of heroes from the game out. That way we have a starting lineup that people really like. And I considered the offer, but uh, a lot of people don't know my situation of um, I have a medication that's very expensive. And I, the only way I can afford it is if I'm on disability or if I have a full-time job. Finding a full-time job with my mm-hmm. disability has been so annoying because I'll have, um, I'll say, like, I'll have this job because I'm a phlebotomist by trade. That's, um, I'm an artist as a hobby, but I try to make money off of that. But um, I'm, I'm a phlebotomist and... Mm-hmm. I, uh, I've worked many places and it always ends the same way. It's we can't have you passing out on the job and people are like, oh, do you pass out because you don't like the sight of blood? No, I have a weird autonomic issue that causes me to pass out and have issues constantly. Low blood pressure, high blood pressure fluctuating between yeah. the two. So I constantly have uh, situations and it always goes the same way. They don't fire me because they can't fire me. What they do is they give me impossible tasks right. and then fire me for not meeting those tasks. That sucks. Yeah. And people are like, well, what's yeah, impossible? Like it's like the they literally give me hours that no human being can do. And then once I start to make mistakes, I get in trouble. Nobody else has to work right. like so 18 like- hours a day. But when yeah, I considered that, I was like, uh-huh. this is just going to be another situation where I'm going to start passing out and then they're going to not want me. And if I make too much money in this job and they end oh, up yeah. firing me, I no longer have the uh, the money come through from the government that makes sure that I can afford my medication. So it's like I'm in the worst situation possible where I live in a conservative family that hates getting handouts from the government. But if I don't have that, I literally cannot survive. So I, I have to yeah, live no, in I poverty just understand. to live. You know what I mean? Right. You need. Yeah. No, no, that makes sense. It's, for it's super frustrating. Yeah. So like with the. And so you felt like you couldn't take the. the um, if the I took the job out? and they fired me, it would be next to impossible to get back on the disability I needed to make sure that I could have insurance to pay for my medication. If I see. So, so, I, so this wasn't like a remote job. Like th- they actually this, wanted, they to, wanted like me to in. move to California and they paid good, but it would have just see, been enough. That's to, what I was offered too. They would have just offered enough to basically barely mm-hmm. live in California. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. yeah. No, like, um, cause, cause I was, uh, I super know what you mean because it was like when I was working, um, on, uh, Salem, it was like, and and oh God, I, I can't get into that too much because mm-hmm. reasons. But like, um, but yeah, when I was working on Salem and we got picked up by an, an animation, uh, I want to say wannabe mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, company, um, they I, yeah, I was offered like a job out there and like to move out there and stuff. Mm-hmm. And but the thing is, like. And then I'm sure this is probably what you ran into, too. When they see that you are uh, like an independent on like an independent contract yeah. instead of like uh, industry level, like um, artists with like previous experience yeah. and stuff on the repertoire, they they pay you shit. They really because do. you're an independent contractor. You're not actually on the team of artists you were, so you were taken advantage of. And I was like, hard pass. Also, I hate California. So yeah, I was no. like, no. California um, sucks. So, I so, yeah, completely like, understand. Yeah, no, I'm a like, Pacific Northwest Like, love people from California. <laughs> but California. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, like, my best friend lives there. Uh, one of my best friends, again, like, my friend Killer lives there. And, like... Because every time, like, you know, California gets brought up, he's like, God, I fucking hate California. (laughs) (laughs) See, my friend loves California. I'm like, you're crazy. (laughs) Like, oh, my God, Sunshine State, Palm Beach. But anyways, yeah, no. I just want to get back. (laughs) It's like, all right, California, calm down. But yeah, it's, there's a, 
<laughs> but yeah, there's a super, super huge difference between like being hired as like a part of the industry team versus like an independent contractor. Mm-hmm. Um, and because it, it like it's like you're on the project, but it's an unofficial like term sheet, I would say, yeah. of like, this is what we need you to do. And once you're done, you're done. Yeah. Like you're not a part of the company. You're not a part of the, the main project. Right. And so because of that, they they treat you like less than um, scraps, yeah. you know, so they're going to. Yeah, it's yeah. always funny. So to they're, they're going to pay you like shit. They're going to. And yet they're going to expect so much out of you, too. Yep. And it's it's like it's so an, un- to an unfair so. degree. I remember yeah. um, I, I worked for an, I worked yeah. for a contract on one project, and uh, the people on the art team all like kind of looked down on me. And one day, like one guy was particularly being rude, and I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna tell him what I think. And he's like, and I was like, I don't care if I lose this contract. These people have been shit. The pay is terrible, and if they want out of the contract, they have to pay their way out of it. And I'm gonna break it by fucking saying my piece. And I was basically like, you guys are all friends of the boss and you all kind of suck at art. So deep down, you know, I'm better than you. And I'm not going to and I'm not saying this to like be on the high horse, but like (laughs) fucking come off of it. You're drawing like you're drawing like cartoons and you and not in a like good stylized way in a shitty I can't stay on model type of way. I'm the reason you even have mm-hmm. a fucking model <laughs> and you can't stay on it. Yeah. <laughs> so who are you mm-hmm. to tell me my art isn't good enough to get hired when your art wasn't good enough to get hired anywhere else? You just happen to be friends with the guy who had money. Which, you know, that's the way the right. industry works. Right. No, absolutely. That, that's the way the industry works. You know what I mean? They hire people out of out it's of college. Networking. Yeah. Um, I was shocked when I went to college at how many people took art classes and did not know how to fucking draw. Graduated, still didn't know how to fucking Whoa. draw. And then right. were surprised whenever they didn't, like, get a job. Mm-hmm. It's like, Which, people are like, go to yeah. art school to learn piece art. Having paper that no. says you can draw, like... And not being able to draw, draw is so big. Right, it just... Right. It just means you like sat down in class and it's like it's totally up to you whether I mean, or not, it shows uh, that, like, you actually learn something shows that or you're something. persistent. Like it shows that you were motivated. Right. Like you went to class. Yeah. Good job. That's true. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to say like all art degrees are like worthless or anything. No, they are. Um, but like <laughs> I'll say it required. I would say they're absolutely not required. Yeah. Yeah. No, they if you're talented, I, I will say a fine arts degree is worthless if anybody w- listens to this and you are in a fine arts degree change your yeah. major to animation change yep. <laughs> like change it because it is so worthless and a lot of the people or the professors obviously depending on the school that you're going to you might you know maybe you have a good one but like they're all uh, at least the, the people that i know that have gone to a fine arts degree um even their professors like my, my friend cameron she um she got a fine arts degree and it's, first of all, given her absolutely nothing um, job-wise. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it taught her some nice skills, but mm-hmm. that's kind of it. Otherwise, she already knew how to draw anyway. So it just kind of polished some fundamentals, yeah. which is good. Which, uh, I personally do not um, uh, thrive in an educational environment. I'm much better, like, off Oh, yeah, I, I feel that. Out my I way. feel that. I learned more from... Right. But like, like self-taught stuff that I ever really learned. Yeah, in art I class. I actually received <laughs> right, the best right. advice ever from my graphic design professor. Uh, he actually told me, and this was years ago, That's back awesome. when I was fresh out of high school and college. He gave me the best advice I could ever had. He said, "You already know how to build following online. You you clearly have a gift for that. You're also like have a gift for teaching yourself. You don't need college." Just go out there, make your connections, and then figure out how to do it yourself. That's awesome. Yeah. Because that was the way he did it. Yeah, my friend Cameron, when she was in... Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, So he became a professor professor didn't have the degree in what he was teaching. They just hired him because he was an industry professional for like 30 years. And he would just tell kids who were like... Oh, yeah. That's his credentials enough. He would just tell people that were in a certain like category he said because we still talk to this day 
He says there are certain people that he said are just so good at figuring this shit out that they should not go to college for it. And this isn't like a Steve right. Jobs. Well, I mean, like, there's there's so many colleges that destroy art. Yeah. Mm hmm. Because like it'll suck the life out of artists. And like a lot of college professors will also like say, oh, you only do this. And it, and it yeah. like super kills see, it. Like that. OK, that like. Like, I feel like if you're going to go into like a job where you're teaching art, you need to they, like I feel like the requirements should be that you like are talented yourself and you know how to teach. Like you've proven that you can teach. Right. Because mm -hmm. Right. My, just, like, like, just because you're good at something my, doesn't mean like, you're a good teacher at it. High school, my art teacher, who obviously I will not name, um, like he was one of the most talented men I knew. Like mm -hmm. his realism work that he did with charcoal, oh my god. Like it was amazing. Mm -hmm. But this man... Did he suck at teaching, yeah. though? <laughs> like, here's, a, like, yeah. here's the thing. He, like, yeah. he knew how to teach basic fundamentals, but there was, like, there was something he would do in his class that I always had, like, a really strong distaste for. Because, mm -hmm. um, like, mm -hmm. at first, I was like, oh, wow, that's, like, a, I was like, I was like, because, like, the way I thought he was going to do it, I was like, oh, that sounds smart. Like, because he had everybody draw something off of reference for, like, the first couple days to, like, kind of mm -hmm. see where everybody was at. And mm -hmm. you were placed in the like levels one through four. One meaning that you knew all like you know you knew a lot already that you could handle a harder task. And four was you are brand spanking new that you would need more mm -hmm. attention. Like, mm -hmm. That's how we put it on. However, a lot of times you would give everyone the same task, and those in level four would just have bad grades. And it oh, wasn't through a lack yeah, of trying what? because I mm -hmm. had that class with uh, my brother. Uh, mm -hmm. like, well, he, like, he's my cousin, I just call him my brother because we grew up together, like, uh, but mm -hmm. we, we were sitting in there, and, like, I, I, like, I obviously, like, had, like, a niche for art, like, so I was put in level one, but it was also because I knew how to break things out and into shapes already that, like, I knew, mm -hmm. I knew some basic fundamentals. My brother right. was mm -hmm. brand new to it, you know? Right. And like I just don't understand what's the point of like making a ranking system to to figure out where each student like stands yeah, and what they need it. and then not use it because yeah. otherwise it's just going to make the students feel like insecure that if they're three and fours. Yeah. Like, you know, and then you're going to give the ones that are one and twos like this elitist syndrome. And yeah, which is, you know, and, like which is essentially what he would do. Those that were in one and two were oh. considered his favorites. Hmm. Oh no! And, yeah. God. Like, that's just gonna build he, like, insecurities he, like, I, I'm and not, or I'm not egos, going to say depending on the number. Nothing, but mm -hmm. there was like a lot of times that like I ran into issues with him. Yeah, because yeah. Well, it's like, like I would for, express for me, my I'm desire the exact to opposite. learn something specific, and he, like because I I, I, mm -hmm. I I expressed my desire to learn like, specific things, because I told them that, like, something I found joy in was anime, that I would mm -hmm. love to, like, learn, like, anatomy and proportions, and he was like, mm -hmm. he's like, oh, cool, but what if you just learned watercolor? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. I was like, yeah. <laughs> One thing that I had growing up, right, my experience with art was so much different. I didn't find a love for art until sixth grade. Um, and that was because I had a fucking amazing art teacher named Mr. Baker. Um, shout out to Mr. Baker. Dude was real. Um, he, <laughs> he had a whole He's deal <laughs> where he knew exactly what you needed to do with middle school students, and that was make art fun. His class was easy. His right, class yeah. was just enjoy making it. You have to do the assignment, but you're able to talk. We're able to listen to music while you make it. And his tests weren't even tests. They were like, question number one, who's the greatest teacher? Mr. Baker, Mr. T Maker, Mr. Baker. If you don't answer Mr. Baker, you're going to fail. <laughs> and he would be like, what's See, the I color scheme? Like it's like a collection of colors that set that uh, that that set the mood or tone of an artwork or a scheme by colors to take over the world. Like, that was the type of shit he did. 
<laughs> and it was awesome. And I remember there was only right. one art yeah. assignment That's I very hated, which was the practicing which yeah, for kids. was the collages where you had to rip pieces of paper and make up artwork out of that. I hated that. It was so monotonous. You know what's the funny thing? Mm-hmm. You, can you know what's the really funny thing with about that teacher I was mentioning? What? Like, huh. while he could not teach, my favorite teacher in that school was actually his daughter. Oh really? Oh. She was an amazing teacher, despite being an English teacher. Like, uh, like, cause which I usually I, I never thrived in English classes until mm-hmm. I got in hers. Oh wow! Because I I was not somebody who could just sit down and like you know copy something from a book and learn something, but she made mm-hmm. it fun. She made it like, oh like she made it interesting. She made it attentive, and whenever I expressed that like, because like, like. Obviously, it being, like, honors English, like, there were harder assignments than normal English. But she let yeah. students take their creative direction with it. And, like, one of the things that we, like, did specifically is we did these, like, uh, videos, like, every trimester. That, like, we would do, like, we would talk about uh, one vocabulary word, and we were supposed to make a video about it. Some students, mm-hmm. like, you know, just did, like, like a couple shots, like, a, like you know, of, like, them kind of, like, on the school campus, you know, talking about it. Right. Um, but I remember me and one other person in the class, like, who would, like, you know, like, pick out their groups and stuff. Uh, we, we, we both took a very creative approach to it. And everybody loved it, and the teacher expressed, like, their love for it. And, mm-hmm. like... While while her dad might have almost killed my love for art, she somehow managed to keep it ignited. She, wow! Yeah, she kept it intact. Yeah, she actually, from picture. what I from what yeah. you told me, is like she gave you a love for writing. It's not yeah. like like she right, and that translates into art yep. because it's like if you're coming up with stories and creativity, you're gonna want to draw it. Yeah, because, so like, makes sense. Actually, so the one person, uh, which it, like uh, this person was named Mal, and like I'm, I'm shouting them out here just because they are some like they are so musically talented. Right, like they were one of the most talented people. Like I like like one of the most talented people I know, and so their group would do like a music video about the word. Mal would come up with the lyrics, the beat, like, all that, and it was just amazing. And, yeah. like, Mal and their friend Craig, like, they obviously, like, had, like, a blast, like, recording these, like, fake music videos. And it was amazing. Oh, nice. And me, I obviously was like, I don't want to record myself. And my friend uh, Noah was like, ah, I don't want my face on there either. And he was like, <laughs> you can draw. And I'm like, where are you going with this? He's like, you can answer. What you talk about, Willis? And I'm like, yeah, I can. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, he, I was like, I, I usually only mean? do like those little goofy animation memes. He's like, what do you think about He's artists? like, here, you don't have to like do a full blown animation. You just got to make it entertaining. And I was like, yeah. you're right. And I had plenty of time, so that's what I ended up doing. And I did not know how well it was going to go at first. And obviously, I was nervous, like you know, mm-hmm. presenting this to a whole class. And um, yeah. But, like, whenever I, like, I showed my teacher first, and, like, I, like, I remember her literally, like, looking at me in the eyes and being like, I've never had a student do this. This is amazing. Yeah. Wow. And, yeah. He, like, she was just so sweet about it, and the class ended up actually very much loving it, because, like, I even animated, like, the goofy bloopers. Like, it was a <laughs> lot of work, but I don't regret any of it, because... Right. Yeah. Like, I, 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 like, if I wasn't as disabled as I was, this was the woman yeah. that made me want to become a teacher. And right. I might not be able Aww, to become, yeah. and, like, I might not be able to become, like, an actual, like, educator who works in the school system, unfortunately, because of my disability, but I want to be able to teach art, like, to people online. And that's kind of what yeah. I do now, alongside Lost. Yeah, that's the great thing about, like, doing online stuff and, like, being a part of communities such as your guys' Discord and stuff is that you can still do that. Mm -hmm. So, like, it might not be the way I originally thought, but, you know, life life throws some curveballs at you because, like, as Lost Lost said, like, like, like about their, like, you know, physical disabilities, mine kind of, I was going to, like, 
I was gonna, I, I was about to say gun. It was like he kind of hit me like a truck, but that's oddly appropriate phrasing. Speaking that yeah. I was in the car accident that left me disabled. <laughs> oh yeah. no! Yeah. So. And but you've adapted, and, and like now you still teach. It's just in a different format, yeah. and that's cool. And, you yeah. know, I'm at, like, and I've been, I've found that I've been able to make deeper connections than I would have been able, like having to follow a curriculum, than by just doing my own thing. Yeah, yeah, I am mm-hmm. excited and because I'm gonna be uh, like, vending next year. I'm like super excited. That sounds, yeah. that sounds really it's, awesome. I'm actually, so I'm actually cool. wanting to start vending myself. I just need I, materials. I wanted to do well, it this year, if y'all have any year, questions, but... I've been vending since 2016. Yeah. <laughs> or 2014, um, excuse me, so... I, I will can definitely hook up with up. any, you know... Uh, yeah, please. Basically, my, <laughs> my biggest struggle right now is, um... I've desperately been trying to find a, uh... a print shop near me that can handle more creative, uh, prints. Like, stuff with some, like, holographic foil and whatnot. The problem is I don't live in a city. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Like, I only have small town oh, print yeah. shops to, to work with. And, like, as much as well, I love my small town print shops. If you're, if you're willing to look through an online source. Online stores are expensive, mm-hmm. though. You get almost no return um, on anything. Um, I've heard there's some good ones out there. And maybe Spec actually would know that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, well, I don't know if it's necessarily true. Like, there's um, my friend, honey, and, and like, told me about a few. right? And it's like a lot of places that have their own like independent small like you know they just run their own little shop, yeah. which I recommend like try to find as much as you possibly can. The bigger the company is, usually the the worse it is. Yeah, both price and quality wise. Local small business, but it's like best. a lot of. <laughs> Right, but because that's not really an option for you, Lost, there is a lot of, like, local places and other, you know, that are not local to you that, like, they do ship. Mm -hmm. So, like, if anything's going to be more expensive, it's going to be just the fact that they have to ship it to you. But, like... I might do that just by going to a place in Dallas, you know. Um, Um, I'm going to look up print shops in Dallas, ask if they can do anything holographic. I'll email them the things I want printed, and then I'll pay for shipping. That's the plan right now, right? I have. I met a very nice uh, lady at the convention mm-hmm. I was at over the past weekend, um, maybe a week ago from people who are viewing this now. But um, she was very, very much like, yeah, I have like a list of like shops I've used in the past that I've reviewed that you could. She says, because whenever I go to conventions, sometimes I need to like make extra prints and they're like last moment. So I end up having to go to the local area of whatever state I'm in, make a few extra prints and have someone watch my stand. And I was like, that's really smart. She's like, yeah. And I end up reviewing the shops that I use that way and plot and post them on my social media so that people can go use them if they like them. And I thought yeah, that's, that's, that's actually sick. a really yeah, good exactly. idea. You could make a whole series on that, like local print shops for artists. Um. But yeah, no, you totally yeah, can. Amazing. Um, for sure. Um, mm-hmm. to pull the topic a little bit back more towards the whole commission thing. Uh, recently, yeah. <laughs> right. my, my good friend Percy introduced me to like their like group of friends that like have like D&D games going on. And mm-hmm. I have to say a lot of D&D people who commission artwork are some of the most respectful people, man. Like, yep. mm-hmm. some of my favorite cool. type of commissioners. And because like everybody who has commissioned me in this group while they have thrown some, like, wild things my way, like, I was not expecting to draw, like, Among Us for d yeah. but... You, <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, uh, but, like, it, like, I love that some of their commissions pulled me out of my comfort zone, and I ended up learning a lot more from it. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, yeah. It, it was no, really fun. Fair. I've been particularly enjoying, like, the one I've been working on, where it's, like, based off the, the famous painting, The Scream. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so it, it it is it's it, like these these group of people are just so lovely and nice, and I love working with them. And yeah, uh, the like main person in the group, uh, which like uh, I I know they go by Skippy, and mm-hmm. um, like he he literally said he's like I'm so happy that I found an artist that I can just talk to in a phone call because I have trouble iterating like my like uh, words in text for an idea yeah but i can just spew the idea over call 
and it's a lot easier. And I'm like, yeah. oh, no, dude, I love doing commissions through call because if I have the person there and they're watching me, if, I, like, if I'm like, I can be like, hey, what do you think of this? And if they're like, oh, can we tweak it a little bit this way? And I'm like, oh, yeah. And it usually ends up becoming perfect like that because that's yeah. how that went for the Varus piece I did for my friend Killer because he was in the call the entire time and everything I added was at his discretion. And so it turned out like it turned out perfect for him and it turned mm -hmm. out easier for me to work on because I knew exactly which direction he was wanting to go. I also yeah. prefer working so, through video and I always offer that. Um, I remember uh, sometimes it can be like tough though because I, I have a I have that one uh, commissioner who um, I do videos with and she'll sometimes not know when to jump in and say she wants changes. And then I'll be like halfway down she'll, and I'll uh -huh. be like, I'm finished. She'll be like, I'm not OK with how it turned out. I'm like, oh, <laughs> huh. I guess I thought we, were, I thought we were on the same page. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Which like, it, like, I, I, I want to say this to like any people out there who like do like does commission artists. You are not being annoying and you're not being like hard to work with just because you want like a small change. Do not be afraid. It's like if you if they're yeah. in like the like sketch portion of it and they're like, hey, how do you like this? Be honest. Tell them exactly what you want to tweak because, oh, man, yeah. is it harder to change. My, my favorite like thing about rendered. the sketch phase right. is how loose it is. So whenever someone tells me they want a big change, I'm always like, tell me during the sketch phase. I will get it done during the sketch phase because Same. I can like yeah. transform, cut it up, chop it into pieces, reconfigure it like a jigsaw puzzle. And we can Frankenstein's yeah. monster right. or something brand new for you until it's the way you want it. But the moment I start getting line art, if you don't speak up that it's not going the way you want it to before then. Like and I think that was the issue was it's like I didn't want to charge them again, but I just finished the artwork. And now I have to start completely yeah. over. Right. But it, it's completely it's completely understandable to do so. Because it's like this like yeah, it, it, like, it's like if, 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 if this could have just been communicated earlier on, it would have been a mistake that we could have avoided. But unfortunately yeah. because it was a mistake that right. happened and it's going to take more of my time, I do have to charge more. Yeah, and right. I don't like charging and, her more because I already feel like I charge her a decent amount. So whenever I mess up and I, even though it wasn't communicated, I still am like, well, I am the one who messed up. But at the same time, I've put hours into this. Yeah. So and it's I like, have a tr I like, have a hard time charging no, I didn't, people. I haven't like, really had that problem too much. Yeah, I'm lucky. Mm hmm. I, the reason like, it's so hard for me to charge um, people yeah. is because, one, I've stated before with the disability thing, I cannot make too much money. So I have to ration out commissions. So a lot of people end up giving reduce, getting reduced for free from me because I can't afford to charge them again. Yeah. So I recently see. I've right. had to start saying... That. Recently, I've had to start saying, you get what you get. If, I see. If you don't speak up. Yeah, I am. In my experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead, Alyssa. Oh, sorry. I was waiting for you. <laughs> sorry. Um, sorry if I seem a little quiet. I just don't want to interrupt y'all. Oh, no, no <laughs> you you're know? fine. You're fine. Um, <laughs> I like I have a lot to say, but I don't want to like, yeah, you know, yeah. interrupt or, or overlap. Spotlight's or on you now, though. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so there is a couple things I want to say, especially for people that are listening. If you are new to commissions or like, say, you're, you know, you're just starting out and you know, or maybe you're like still learning to like art. Um, I uh, don't be discouraged if you don't get a commission after like six months. Like that's really normal. I, at least in my experience yeah. when I was first starting out, like I felt lucky if I got a commission every four months. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's kind of what I was saying earlier at the beginning of the podcast of like, once I got a commission when I was starting out, I took it regardless if it was like fun or not fun or like mm -hmm. regardless of the, the client. Yeah. And, um, 
the more you do it, the more you start like getting picked. Uh, kind of building a reputation, I guess, mm-hmm. of being able to do commissions. Um, and, you know, you'll start to get a little bit of momentum there. There's and word of mouth. you start getting more, like, instead of getting one... Right, right. Because it'll be like, hey, look, my friend did this. Or like, hey, this one artist that I, you know, hired did this. And, you know, it starts yeah. spreading slowly but surely. Like, And, um, and, and I feel like... Oh, yeah, sorry, what were you going to say? I was going to say, like, the thing is, like... Oh, I thought you were going to say something about oh, like that. Yeah. I, I was saying um, with um, with pricing, too, especially, <laughs> pricing appropriately is very important when you're first starting out. Um, if you're really yeah, skilled... Yeah, for sure. If you're really skilled, uh, it's okay to charge a little bit higher, but if you don't have a following, you cannot expect people to not try to take advantage of you with that. It will happen. Yeah. If yeah. you are not as good and don't have a following... You're gonna have to lowball people. Um, I, I've told, I told, I've had many people who price themselves too high, and I never, I don't like saying pricing too high because I believe people should be fairly compensated. But the reality is, if you're too high, people aren't going to pay it. They just aren't. Um, yeah. Here's the thing. Uh, and yeah, some people if, can be like, really rude about not if paying. If you price it too. too low. Yeah. If you price, you devalue low, other artists. You can also be seen as like you, you see like yeah, you devalue other artists, and you also seem like you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Like you're desperate. Is, like, in a weird way. What? Yeah, which is like. Right. Which is like I, I hate I hate to put it that way, but if you come off that I, way, I think you're cutting you're out. Cutting out really bad. Your. Um, no, no, you're good. You're good. I'm just, I'm just. Uh, my, it was sorry. my net. My yeah, net, say that again. My net zipped for a second there. Sorry. Yeah. Um, oh no, you're good. You're good. But like, because like, I really hate putting it that way. But if you charge mm-hmm. yourself too low and you like, you do come off like you don't know what you're doing, and yeah. someone will see that, right, and be like, um, well, I've found you're clearly really cheap new to this, and I want somebody. Mm-hmm. Who's I found that the moment I hit 10k. In followers yeah. is the moment. So it's, I it's hard really to find a balance. I think stuff. is the point. <laughs> to the point where I only have to do a commission like once every month. Um, it's it's been wonderful, um, and it's made my uh, commissions almost an exclusive club that you pretty much have to know me to get one from me, um, which is nice because you have regulars who are willing to pay that that higher pricing because of what you can give them. While at the yeah. same time, when you let new people in, they're usually like, it's funny. I hear people say like, oh, I bragged to my friends that I got into like your commission yeah. list. And I'm like, all right, uh, <laughs> cool. But, uh, but it's kind of like one of those things when I go to. Yeah, it's it's also really funny because <laughs> I've, I've done a lot of work for a uh, voice actor. It's like you're a bouncer and or a I always forget how over <laughs> how crazy valued artists are on Twitter versus voice actors. Because I've seen voice actors who are like in huge A list roles where they're like they're like say like they're like Barrett from Final Fantasy VII in the remake, and they have like thirty thousand followers, and I'm just like Joe Schmo artist with 15,000 in only one month, you know? And it's like, man, it's, it almost doesn't seem fair. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. No, it's incredibly hard. Right. It well, it's, years. it's interesting because it's like artists, It don't get me wrong, it is hard to get off your feet as an artist, but sometimes I, and, and like maybe, maybe my, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. It's hard, but like, and like, maybe I am a little like, my my view is skewed. But as sometimes I feel like who, I feel like music and voice acting is even harder. Voice acting. And like, I don't know if I just music, feel that way I'll because I've made it as an I artist, and so therefore it feels attainable to, to me. Or, but I don't even know. Even though I'm the best <laughs> you know? at art. Um. Really? Okay. See, and that's why I was let saying me, I don't know if it's just it like way. my my um, my view is skewed because I've made it, and let therefore let me to me way. it sounds attainable. But like acting, I don't actually you know that. Do not see so success that's, that's cool that because you have a lot of voice three, actors. So. And I, I don't want to say this because it sounds very mean, but the voice acting and voice actors in the community in general are politically charged constantly. 
Nobody wants to see that. Nobody does. Zero people want to see that in their content every day. Okay. And uh-huh. voice actors are on a yeah. soapbox yeah, no. constantly. Keep that shit out. That's, yeah. And it's not fun. Uh, the directors yeah. who hire you in voice acting don't like to see that on your timeline. A lot of people who are like, uh, damn, that they're, they're like, uh, I don't understand why I'm not getting a job as a voice actor. I've like, I've had all, all my friends are getting these opportunities. Oh, I'm yeah. like, all your friends aren't sure. talking about Trump all day. They aren't, you know, <laughs> I'm not a fan of Trump either, but like, come on. Right, right. Like, because here's yeah. the yeah, thing, no, there keep, is... Keep that shit off. The thing, there is no problem exactly. in, to like... like uh, I'm, of, I'm like, very... Payment. Don't let it cost you, like, mm-hmm. what you love doing. Right, right. The way I see it, and something I learned being, like, a YouTuber... Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, The thing I learned about, like, being a YouTuber is that, like, there are some things you keep privately and some things mm-hmm. you, you, you know, you're public about. And it's like when you are starting to um, openly talk about like politics, uh, it, it's different than like, you know, I, I, like I, I understand that like politics is like a little bit of like, yes, standing up for what you believe in. Uh, but it's also a little different than like, yes, I believe like trans people deserves rights. Yeah. But it's also like I'm not I'm not going to talk about specifically politics yeah. and the talks about like presidency and laws and everything, because if I do that, I'm going to be limiting my audience and yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be also limiting my uh, my space for certain people that might have different political that opinions than me absolute to feel safe Twitter. with my content. And I don't want to do that, that regardless that, that's of why how, so whoever my viewers that you're not on Twitter. Um, political um, beliefs are. So I just keep Twitter, that out of the workplace. Twitter yeah, <laughs> a year ago that, that, that's exactly made me why, like, I try to and whatever. Like no, it's we're, we're name we're dead named yeah. Twitter. <laughs> Because, I fucking hate X, you mean? Yeah. Oh, God. But, um, <laughs> but essentially... Um, it's fucking Twitter. It's, it's Twitter. Twitter. It's, it's, it's so Twitter. good to be on Twitter. Elon should be on. Because <laughs> yeah. about a year ago, I was on the For You tab more than I should have been. And the problem with Twitter back then, and it's still now to this day, I only I only go on the following tab now because I'm following enough people to where I actually have... Um, mm-hmm where I actually have uh, things I like there. But the For You page is just a cesspool of people shouting to the void, a bunch of angry opinions, people getting mad about yeah. memes. Memes! You know? And it's like, the problem is, you want to weigh in on that. It's it's so easy. Hold on a second. It's so easy to just, yeah. like, <laughs> so every time, out it feels like every your time. opinion on a thing that nobody cares about and then in the grand scheme of things you're there to post art people are following you because they like the pretty girl you drew you know what i mean so right so when i when i make a tweet that's like i'm no longer republican people are like oh cool who cares right it's you know nothing to do with you know yeah. it feels <laughs> Who fucking cares? Right, right, right. Because, like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I feel like every time oh, I open sweet. Twitter, it's They're like, giving hormones to bears? Like, right, turning the bears gay? Oh, I'm mad about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, I, that's why I, like, just stay off that shit. Turn all the bears gay. Finally, a president I can get behind. <laughs> turn the freaking bears no, gay. No, fuck yeah. Turn the bears gay. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> the God, the the turn the freaking bears gay. <laughs> Yeah. Gay bear for president. <laughs> you know what? Gay bear for president. Yeah. Gay bear for president. Not the president, president we wanted, but the president we needed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, but but anyways, though. Uh huh. Oh, I, I was just saying, yeah. like, um, g- kind of going back to commissions, though. It, it's like, yeah, starting out, it's going to be rare and few and far in between, and that is not mm-hmm. it. it don't get deterred for anybody who's watching this. It's like, or insecure thing. because that is totally normal. Like, it doesn't mean people find your art undesirable. It doesn't mean your stuff is bad. It doesn't mean yeah. people don't want you. It's just that either people don't see you yet or you just, like, haven't gotten to a point where you are seen. Yeah. If that makes sense, yeah. if there even is a difference. Um, It's like, I, uh, yeah, it, it was, like, super rare for me. And, and I feel like... Mm-hmm. 
a lot of people because like a lot of people only know my stuff once I started to get decent um, at art and that might come to a surprise to some people but it's like no uh, mm-hmm. the way I kind of explain it is like you know in in like corporate standard jobs there's a ladder in theory there's at least there's supposed to be and it's like you know you start small yeah. and then you go up that ladder you get like promotions you go up different um like you know you go from like a cashier to like a manager to like mm-hmm. blah, blah 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 you go up the ladder with independent stuff such as commissions online that that is exactly. independent work it's like there is a ladder too it's just not as visible it's a little invisible, but mm-hmm. it's there. You it is there. You gotta break into the industry. And that ladder starts out with you charging small prices because you're new, because you're a novice. Yeah. And just in general, chances are, there's, a, there's a culture online. Right, you gotta... And, and it's like, I'm not even talking about, like, actual industry. I'm just talking about, like, online presence, too. It's like that that... Yes, and it's like so you start out small with very rare hold gigs, one second, very hold rare one second, commissions hold one second. with low prices, and the more co- commissions you get, chances are you're getting better at your skill, so you're going to be able to make better quality commissions. So you, yeah, you're good. Oh, that's why I didn't want the dogs Everything in my room. Is, okay. is it okay? I'm I'm confused. I, I, something must have happened in the background. Okay, like. Dog. Uh, we're gonna have to clap so I can. Yeah, yeah, okay, I you're figured. Fine. I was, I was gonna say, I bet it's your dogs. Anyways, right. as I was, uh, am, I, One, am I good to keep two, going? Three. Okay, I'll take. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, cool. Um, anyways, as I was saying, is that uh, fuck? What was he saying? My ADD brain. You um, were, you were saying that like. Mm-hmm. Like, again, don't be deterred about, like, like you know, not getting commissioned right. when you're just starting out with your online presence. Right, right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's like, it's going to start out with you getting it every few months, if that, at a really low price, just to kind of get, like, your feet wet. And then, like, the more, yeah, the more you do commissions, right. the more skill you're going to get, the more visibility you're going to get, even if it's a little... Slight, they're baby step. It's a very, very slow process. And uh, then you can start charging more because you're getting more practice. You're getting a higher demand because people also forget when you are pricing your stuff, it's not just yeah. about your skill and how quick you can get the commission done. It's also about how much demand people are asking you. Like if you are um, getting requests for commissions yep. every so the week, issue I got then, into, yeah. you can't take all of those commissions yeah. because then you're going to have this huge mountain of backlog and you're going to drown. And um, that is a really, really, yeah. And like, that is totally a slippery slope. And it's like, you can't, when you get to the point where you cannot accept every single commission, somebody comes up and asks yep. for that means you are so wanted that you need to start charging more and actually start denying requests for commissions um and if you are that high in demand that means you're you're so desirable that your price should go up so it should be because because the way it works is like right if if the demand is higher your Mm -hmm. your availability does not always go higher too um so you have to make each commission count if that makes sense and therefore it needs to be worth the the money as well um, so like I, my first commissions when I was starting out and I would only yeah. get a commission once every four months on TV and art when I was like 17, 18 and I was not very good at art. So I charged really low and maybe I was undercharging, but like sketch commissions were, I think yeah. 10 or $15 and then a full ink. So this is super undercharging, but again, I was new mm-hmm. and young and I had no demand yeah. and, and my skill kind of sucked. So you know, you kind of get what you pay for. Yeah. Um, and, I and I was a super a novice. Like, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I had barely studied fundamentals. I, like, just started. And, um, and yeah, my, my full inks. Because, like, a lot of people... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And, and uh, my full... But my full inks, which is a project that's, like, hours of work and material, was $30. And then it started, you know... I started getting commissions once every couple months instead yeah, of like wow. once every six we, months. Wow, we. And then I moved it up to like 45, ooh, a whole $15 <laughs> more, you know, kind of thing. And then you skip forward to 
<laughs> wow. Yeah, right. And then like you skip forward to when I was maybe like, let's see. 19. So like a year later, 1920, 1920. Yeah. Um, year or two later. And I started getting more decent now. Um, so my skill was getting better. Mm-hmm. I was getting a little bit of followings. Oh, and let me just also clarify just because yeah. like lost your example was 10,000 followers. I only had 2000 followers. I cheated. I had like on DeviantArt. daily and like DeviantArt's a lot harder to, to get followers, at least back in the day. I, I, DeviantArt's dead now. This is back when DeviantArt was alive. Yeah. Um, no, you don't. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like I don't I don't want to give people the idea that you need to have like a huge following to get commissions because if you just having like even a couple hundred or like yep. 2000 followers, that's um, enough. Just again, like don't if you're starting out, so, it's going to be like so one many thing months that, um, before you, you know, someone reaches out. One thing um, that I found, especially but yeah, so just in case was, anybody like, was worried there, you, you don't need a huge following. You just getting need it a done little bit of a connection. Uh, but. Those who know me from Twitter know that I made a post a while ago that I had pinned for almost a full month. I, I plan on having it longer, but I made it an SFW account, so I wanted to advertise that for a bit. And now I cannot find this post and I may have to retype it. But... I had to, like, kind of bear all how out of control my commission situation had gotten. Because it wasn't a situation where I wanted to keep it um, secret from everyone else. Because as far as I was concerned, this affected everyone. If people wanted to commission me in the future, they needed to know what kind of hole I dug myself in. So they wanted to weigh whether or not they wanted to continue or not. It was the responsible thing to do. Um, and I had to be like, I fucked up. I had way too many Mm -hmm. commissions on my plate and I was even completely Mm -hmm. honest where I was like, look, the worst part was I had all these commissions and I just ignored them because I was so stressed about them. And I did free artwork that I wanted to do for me. And I prioritized that and growth on Twitter over my responsibilities to my commissioners. And that was fucked up. Um, so I had, I had a lot of people who were commissioned. Yeah. Oof. So. Yeah. But also, like, getting into that dip is so real. Yeah. It sucks. Um, and, like, that's why I was saying it's like yeah, when you start getting a demand so high, was, you have to start denying what ones. What ended up happening was I, I was just honest about it. Is so but high. I feel like uh, that's the problem. Like, a lot artists, of artists, if this to happens that. to you, own up to it. You have to own up to it. You can't just ghost people and, like, expect your reputation to stay intact. You know what I mean? I I yes. offered uh, two ways out take for my commissioners. Yeah. They can either wait for me to finish, and I told them I'm going to be real. It's going to take a while. Yeah. But um, if you don't want for sure. to wait for me, I'm willing to work toward getting you a refund, full refund, not, not a partial refund. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, it was my reputation on the line. Um, and if I screwed up, I have to own that. That was that was <laughs> my fault. Uh, I, I refunded about a quarter of the people. Everyone else seemed to want me to finish their commission. They were mm-hmm. just, they liked my work that much that they were willing to wait. Um, so I started messaging these people, uh, giving them updates. I have like a daily reminder mm-hmm. to like message these people, be like, I have not started your commission yet. I'm still working on the list. I just want to make sure you're aware that I have not forgotten about you. You know what I mean? So, but I'm so close to finishing this list. I only have four more commissions left and then I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Do y'all want to know how big the list was real quick? Which I'm so proud of you. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Amazing. Yeah, dude, that's that's amazing. 25. I um, because like, yeah, falling into that like rut of accepting too many. Oh, it's what, 20? That's my guess. 35 fuck dude yeah that's a lot yeah it, and and you know it's like you're not the only um, i almost lost my insurance this, because of it accidentally like because it's like you know it's exciting to get commissions yeah, you wanna, it's, you wanna, it's it's, it's like, income like, oh yeah right check fuck yeah 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 it, it's like it's it's uh it's a really really easy slippery slope to fall into because it's like um, and this is why I was saying like demand and like keeping track of what your demand is, is so important because 
yeah, you're not the only one that has gone through this. A lot of artists and anybody who's listening, be careful of this because it's if you just accept if you if your demand is is up and it's on the rise and you're, mm-hmm. it's just going to keep going up and up and up and you just accept every commission that you get because you get excited. You're like, cool, I'm booming. People want my stuff. That means I can raise my prices too. I'm being recognized. This can pay my rent. This could pay my bills this, mm-hmm. or whatever the fuck. It's like, it, you know, it seems more secure, but you have to remember that you are not a machine. Like yeah. you are a human being. And when you yeah. accept more, like if you bite off more than you could chew, you're going to run into this problem that you're running into loss. And a, a lot of people get into that. So um, something I suggest and something I started doing was I, if you can find your limits, I notice for me, if I'm doing mm-hmm. digital paintings as commissions, um, which I uh, didn't get to say earlier, but yeah, like when I first started out, it was like $15, $30. Cut to um, back when, before I stopped taking commissions a couple years ago, mm-hmm. my full single character paintings started at a flat rate of $300. So that, that could give an idea of like how you grow. And like, because I've improved since then, um, and, and depending on the client's demands, I might even charge more. So it's like, that's, that's kind of like a great example of the latter of like, starting small and with the rare far and few at like right. 15 30 dollars cut to now more i'm like an independent professional and now i'm charging three to four hundred dollars per commission and i limit it to only three slots so that's what i was saying is like if you find your demand is too high um limited to like whatever you think your limit is because yeah. i put so much damn work into my paintings uh, my digital paintings i find yeah. my limit for commissions is three um, before I need a break, I need to recharge, and then I can it's open really it again funny. with another three slots. And if it's, a client misses it, I'm sorry, I can't squeeze you in, people, no matter how much you beg, because otherwise I'm going to like kill myself and burn myself out, uh, which is going to affect uh, clients. Uh, there's a delay <laughs> you know, it's on yeah. my recording right now. Um, oh. <laughs> I, no, what, what were you going to say, Kat? Um... um what I, like, what I was wanting to say is, like, something really important to, like, artists who are just starting out and especially younger artists. Um, yes. Please only accept commissions you are comfortable with. Like, I understand you're starting out. If someone comes out comes to you with a commission, you're, you get excited. You're like, oh, wow, somebody actually wants to buy my work. And I understand that's so exciting. But if they ask for something that you are not comfortable with drawing... And like, or something you're just not comfortable mm-hmm. with doing, or you don't think you can do it, do not make yourself do it. Yeah, don't do it. Like you have to understand, like, because like if something is making you feel uncomfy, don't like don't do it. There is nothing wrong with saying no to a commission, mm-hmm. and there is nothing wrong with you know blocking someone if they yeah. ask for something very uncomfortable, especially to the younger artists out there. For sure. Because it's like you have to set your own boundaries. Will will prey on younger artists. Like they'll ask for an NSFW commission from them and use that as a way to start a line of contact. It's the reason why when I bring up the um the thing I was talking about with like people thinking I'm a woman online constantly. It's like I didn't realize And and it's also like girls just in general when it comes to commissions, y'all deal with a lot of freaks. Y'all just do. There's real nut jobs mission who commission uh, women like the people who know I'm a guy. Don't be act nearly as weird <laughs> as when they think I'm a girl. Yeah. Usually when someone wants a weird commission out of me, I just send a selfie first. See, see how they respond. It's so real. Mm hmm. I mean, I I still can't figure out what it is. Sexism is real, you know, so it's, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's crazy how like much firsthand experience of kind of both sides you're, you're seeing, you know, um, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, no, don't, don't be afraid to, to set boundaries and give yourself the self-respect of, making yourself comfortable because if you're uncomfortable with something it's like not only are you opening yourself to potentially being preyed upon like what Kat was saying but it's also like 
just like the art in general, like is, I, is probably not going to be good, you know, because, you know, we're artists, we're very passionate individuals. It's like we have to typically we, we want mm-hmm. to enjoy what it is that we are doing and therefore a line of comfort. I And because, you know, art, art is very meditative I'm, and it's like even with it's a client. So it's like if you're doing something that you're uncomfortable with or like maybe yeah. you don't have the skill for it. I know a lot of artists don't do Mecca because Mecca is fucking nuts yeah it's um, really hard to do you know like i i, I only do yeah. it for certain people <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah so it's like if you're even it doesn't have to be like predatory kind of stuff um uh but it could be anything like if you if you're uncomfortable drawing horses for example like i don't know why i just really struggle with this animal or something um you don't have to do that you know what i mean like it could both big and small things um the last like the last thing i really want to add on to this is yeah like I am grateful that I had the people I had around me whenever I was starting out with art because uh when I first started taking art super seriously and trying to build a following was when I was about 14 and I remember Mm -hmm. like at at one point Mm, I wanted to try and accept a very not okay commission for a 14 year old to be doing and I mentioned oh no like my friend like as a I mentioned it to my friend, uh, Hachi, who I've mentioned before, um, and he, 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 he low-key parented me. He was like, absolutely not, you're not doing that. In fact, you were Mm -hmm. going to go block that person right now. Like, he, like, Mm -hmm. because, like, he, he was much older than me, and, uh, he understood that, like, yeah, I did not know what I was doing. That I was, I remember being a little huffy at him at the time because I was like, "Oh, but it's it's good money," and him being like, "No," because he saw that I was about to put myself in a very dangerous position, and mm-hmm. he was like, "Absolutely not," because again, like, which I, I I will forever be like really grateful to Hachi for that because like, like he yeah. he he really pulled like a big brother move for that like there, being like, "Absolutely not, you're not taking that yeah. commission." Like you were way too young. He had no problem with me starting an NSFW commission since the moment I hit 18, though. Like, right, he, yeah. If like, you're going to do NSFW, do it when you're 18. When younger, yeah. <laughs> like, he was, he'd get on to me. <laughs> and I'm very, very right. grateful for that. Because, like, if I did not have Hachi yeah. in my life at that time, I'm scared to think what kind of position I could have been put in. Yeah. I mean, it's like when you're a kid, it's like you don't know better. And that's why that's why you could be preyed upon. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it, I was if anybody the... listens to this and you're a minor, never, ever, ever do NSFW for anyone. I don't even care if they're your same age. I don't even yeah. care if they're also a minor. Don't do NSFW until you're 18. Yeah. Because here's the other thing, too. is like, if you do that uh, because of, just for, like, reputation even. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't want to, like, you know, make a mistake and do something you're going to regret yeah. or makes you look weird um and i know it's enticing. when you're a teenager and then right it is enticing very, because very of the money enticing and everything like, like that especially but, like because i i like again whenever i was younger i lived under the poverty line so you know yeah. seeing something like seeing them offer that much for my work i was like whoa i could help like, i could help my parents yeah. with this you know i was like i, I, I right. was like i can get something i've been wanting you know and, and it was very enticing and but it was also like the reason like that person was offering so much is because they knew I was a kid. They knew yeah. that if they could if they could catch me like hook me, that you know right. they would have a direct line of access. Um, I do say we need and to wrap up. Who knows what kind of uncomfortable position I could have been put in? Yeah, absolutely. I'm and, like you very didn't grateful want a mistake that I, you made like, when you were a kid. Older artists didn't in know my better. life. Shut, I agree. Shut um, that down. They were like, "That's I, not okay." I will I say though, um, right. it's it is time to wrap up. We yeah. are at like an yeah, hour sure. and twenty I, minutes. I'm so great, yeah, so no, great advice. Yeah, it was so great much. having you guys on once again. Um, yeah. This episode will go out. Yeah. In, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Maybe sometime this weekend. We'll see. Um, but yeah, uh, it was great doing the second episode with you guys. I love having you on. Um, and we will see everyone next time. Okay. Bye. Yeah. Yeah.